Hi everyone, today we're going to go over engraving and cutting in laser gerbil. So this is my Corel Draw program and what I've designed is some templates that are easily interchangeable and uh, this is of course is for Christmas ornaments. So some have a little more detail, some don't, some have text, and of course this will be my cutting template. So just showing you in millimeters that all of these were actually duplicated so I would have the exact same size. And so part of my template that I have text to path that I can change this if I wanted to do different writing, different uh, fonts, different sizes. Of course, edit the spacing. So I'm just going to quickly design up this baby's first Christmas ornament and this is for my brother. His stepson just had um, a baby girl. Well, his girlfriend had the baby girl. But uh, yes, so this is for baby's first Christmas and just showing you that I'm doing an outline there so that everything just doesn't muddy together. I, by putting a little white outline you can uh, see a little bit of the difference. So. I'm just fast forwarding through this, just modifying it where I want things to go. There we go. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to select this box and export it. So I'll go to File Export. And I'm just exporting it as a PNG. Naming it there. to make a new folder box for ornaments. Just sometimes it's a, a lot easier to find things if you categorize them. There we go. So I'm just exporting as a black and white. Now if it was grayscale, I would add all that. I'm going to do size one to one and the resolution at 300 dpi. I'm gonna leave that. And I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to interlace and go OK. So that's the part that I'm going to be engraving. And then I need my cut template. So I'm going to export that as well as a PNG. Black and white. And interlace that as well. And these are the wood blanks I was able to pick up at Dollarama. Five pieces for $2. Um, four and a half inches by four and a half inches. Four millimeter thick and uh, already pre-cut. I thought I couldn't go wrong. And so I'm just going to set this, and yes, this is a window grate, it's painted, but I did try to scrape off as much paint as I could with a wire brush where I was going to be cutting. Uh, a waffle board is more ideal, but I will be expanding my machine, so I don't wanna invest in a small waffle board that I won't be using for very long. So right now I'm just set actually setting up magnets. So magnets will stick to the grate and then I will be putting magnets on top as well and that will hold the material still. So I do have the machine in the home position because I want to try and line up the material as close to the home position as possible. So I am fast forwarding through here and hopefully I get that set up shortly. <laughs> There we go. So now I am just focusing my laser, which is the Ortur Laser Master 2 Pro. My laser is the LU24. And I'm making sure that the material isn't too far off. Sometimes I'll add something to under the feet to uh, level it out a little bit better. So now I've opened up Laser Garble, I've connected my Ortur, and I am going to open my file. So we're going to start with the engraving. And there's my file, and I'm going to open that. So I'm going to keep it at line to line tracing. Now when I click on the black and white, it kind of fuzzies up my design there. So I'm just gonna turn that off because I want it nice, crisp and clean and smooth looking. 
So I'm going to keep it on line to line, diagonals, my favorite burn, seven lines per millimeter. I don't need any of those settings, and I'm going to click on next. Now for my machine, I like the setting at 2200, 2200 to 2300. And I am going to put the max in. I'm usually anywhere from 800 to 850, and I'm not going to touch the laser minimum. And it's on the auto size. Now I'd have to turn that off if I wanted to resize it, but I'm keeping that on because I've designed it to size and I have to make sure it stays to the size that my cutting template is going to be as well. So you'll see that finer line around there will actually be cut out as well. So before I start, I always home. Make sure your origin is set to your home. It is always easiest to, to do burn and engrave from the home position if you're doing it simultaneously. Now, if you do jog your laser, um, you make sure you set the origin button, but always click on home before you start to burn. And uh, so I'm just going to frame it up and make sure it's within the material. And you'll see the little pink cross going across. So that's me framing it. And even when it gets done framing, I always click the home button and click play to start engraving. And I'll open up my sliders that you saw to the right hand side. And uh, I can adjust as it starts engraving. If it's just coming out too dark or too light, I just play with the power, the linear or the rapid speeds. So here it is, the lasers doing the framing, which I'm happy with. And in two seconds here, there we go. I'm going to start engraving. So this is actually actual speed. I just wanted to show you that uh, hopefully you can see that uh, the little line around the ornament is just coming out perfectly. So I fast forwarded that for you. I am just on the last little bit of engraving the ornament. And I'm really happy with how crisp and clean this is turning out. Here we go, all finished up. And without moving the machine or turning it off or anything, I'm going to open up my cutting template. And instead of the line to line tracing, I'm going to take it to vectorize. And I've got no filling turned on. There's lots of little options, but uh, we're cutting, so it's no filling and you'll see how it's outlined. I've got the optimized travel turned on and the adaptive quality, I was just uh, clicked on the little help button and this is what it would be for the adaptive quality. Now I've never had to turn it on, but if you guys are getting issues with some of your work looking funky, by all means turn it on. This is what it would look by for filling. And this is why I have a solid um, piece for my ornament because if you had just an outline of a box, you're gonna actually get two outlines, but if you have a solid item, you're only gonna get the one outline like I have here. And I'm going to do a border speed of 300 and I'm changing it to constant power to cut. I'm gonna take this up to 850. I'm going to make my max 850 and of course auto size, so it keeps in the exact same size as my engraving. So I'm going to home that, and I'm going to frame that as well. And as you can see, as those points are going around, I'm able to turn around, look at my laser as it's going around and making sure that it's all lined up to that outline as well that I engraved. And it's all good. So I'm going to press home again, and I press play. And then as it's playing, I'll open up some sliders too 
um, because I'll up the power or lower the power if I find it it's burning too light or too dark but uh, I found that this cutting speed the 300 at about 850 works for me so this is just me framing it making sure that my laser is lining up to all of those lines and as soon as, as soon as it stops it'll get back I'll home it again and then I will press play so here it is in the first pass and uh, you may be wondering why aren't I burning at 100% speed well number one is you will burn out your laser faster by always using it at 100% um, secondly you will char the wood it'll burn you'll have to sand quite a bit more so I do these steps and yes I may have to do four passes but it's crisp and clean and you'll see at the end that I just have no trying whatsoever um, so this is the first pass going around now with the one tool that I had selected it was supposed to burn all the inside objects first and it did three of them and then headed out to the outside circle and now it's going back in for those inner pieces again so I'm not sure what's going on there maybe I'm not running the most current copy of laser gerbil I'm going to have to check that out and uh, troubleshoot why it did that Okay, so between the cuts, make sure you're always homing and then press play. Never leave your laser unintended as well, especially when you're cutting. If it freezes and your laser is still on, you are going to have a fire. So you'll see that with my window grate, it is raised. My machine is raised on two by fours as well. And uh, I actually just have an old bamboo cutting board underneath and it keeps my table and my spoil board pretty 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 um i've got my fan going i do have the air assist so the nozzle the black nozzle that you see on my laser that is called air assist and i have an air pump um working to it as well and at the end of this video i'm actually going to show you a site where you can get these and the guys are fantastic so as my second lines are going around here you'll actually see the lasers start to show up, the lighting underneath. You'll see the blue flashes, so you can tell that it's starting to go through the wood on its second pass. And even on its first pass, it did go through a couple spots. And there is our second pass completed. So now we're going in for our third pass and I'm, I'm not going to show you the whole pass because I'm just going to show you that uh, as it's going along, you'll start to have pieces drop. So I believe it's this piece that uh, here is going to slightly drop out. There we go. So I know I'm getting closer. And you can start to see the blue laser light underneath shining through. It's very important to keep the airflow going so you're not causing any fire. Some spots may like to smoke and you might think that they're on fire for a little bit, um, but with the air assist that helps put it out. There's quite a bit of smoke in, in some spots there, but uh, the, the smoke actually doesn't stay in my room too long for just having the air exhaust off to the side like that. Um, like I said, eventually I'm going to expand my table and I will definitely be hooking up a, a better air exhaust system. Okay, so we're finally on our fourth and final pass. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to uh, raise the speed a little bit and lower the power a little bit, especially because we had pieces falling out. So I put our power at about 75% of what I was running. And this is when you need to get ready in case you need to stop your machine. 
And of course, my magnets that I'm using here, I actually have thinner magnets that I like to use, but I couldn't find them in order to make this video because I, I don't like the uh, material there to be raised so much that it's falling down so far. And you'll see what I mean when the circle actually falls out. So when you have to stop quickly, you hit the red cross button, the red square button, <laughs> and you hit abort job. But there is a few second delay. And you'll see here as I'm going around, There, it's starting to pop a little bit. And there it goes. So at this point, I think I pressed stop. But it was a few second delay to that, but it didn't hurt anything because it fell flat, so it didn't uh, over engrave anything just by that few second delay. So I turn my machine off so I can move it out of the way and I can pick that up and there you go, that piece comes off nice and clean. And I can easily just pop out those pieces. Now I did put, run into a problem with one piece there, not burning all the way through. And it's not the laser's fault. Every wood is different. It could be the glue. It could be the type of wood it's sandwiched in that spot. Um, but all you have to do is take an X-Acto knife if you've got any issues there. Take it down. Don't press too hard because you might tear the um, back of the wood piece. So you just, here I am. I've made the cut, but now I'm like really reefing on it to get it out. So it might take a little bit of elbow grease, but eventually it will get out and uh, you can clean up the corners. So that's it all engraved. Now before I give it a slight sanding, I have my Ladybug vacuum. I love this guy, especially when I'm working with glitter because glitter gets everywhere. So I'll give it a quick vacuum. And then I'm going to go in with my 220 grit sandpaper and as flat as I can so I'm not really getting into the grooves at all because I don't want to lose my engraving. But with my fingers as flat as I can and look how fast I go. Woohoo! I, I sped it up. I'm, I'm really not that quick. If I was, I wouldn't need an orbital sander. And I'm just going to do the back, but you can see there's no charring on the back from it cutting. So just take your time. And I'm just going to vacuum over it again there with my little ladybug vacuum. And in a second, I'll show you it's all good to go. Now, as you'll see, I'll take my finger and I'll go along the uh, cut edges and you do not see any charring on my finger. And there it is. So it's good to go with a little bit of paint or you can use the Prismacolor soft core pencil crayons to add some color to it and then possibly clear coat it if you'd like. So I'm just gonna quickly show you King Gubby Designs. Now I'm not sponsored in any way, but I have ordered um, legs and feet and, and various items from these guys and they're fantastic and they've really expanded what they've got. So they do have an air compressor pump there and they do have their air assist nozzle packages. And I'm just gonna take you to uh, laser to uh, uh, page two if you have the Z-axis like I do, I, you can get a side mount air assist and they carry all different types of attachments for a bunch of lasers. And that's it for today. So please like and subscribe and have a great day, everybody.